Hello and welcome to this demonstration on Deep Exploration 6.2. I'm going to spend the next 20 minutes giving you an overview of this product and showing you what stunning results you can get from your CAD models and how visual communication can help your company to leverage the most from your existing CAD data. The subject of this demonstration is going to be the injection molding tool you can see here on the screen. As you can see it's quite a detailed design and this tool was developed by a right hemisphere customer called RPM Tooling based in New Zealand. The original data was created on ProEngineer and has seamlessly been opened in Deep Exploration. Deep Exploration will open a huge variety of CAD files including Inventor, SolidWorks, ProEngineer, Katia as well as many others. As you can see from the information panel this assembly contains just over 350 components. Just above the information panel we have the scene tree. Folders represent sub-assemblies and you can easily hide and unhide components from the viewport just by checking and unchecking the box next to the component. You can see I can easily hide some components here from the main assembly. Now it might be the case that someone is looking at this file for the first time and is not familiar with the design. For this reason Deep Exploration features a pull apart tool. This tool will allow users to pull components away from the main structure and place them anywhere in the viewport. As you can see here, I can just grab those components to get a better look at the inside of the model. And then when I'm finished, I can easily return to the home position. As you would expect from a CAD visualization tool, there are many ways in which you can view the model on the screen. Users can quickly toggle between a variety of modes including bounding box, solid, transparent, wireframe, technical illustration, which we will look at in more detail later on, shaded view, shaded outline and a couple more bounding box options. You also have some different ways to dis display the model within the viewport. Depending on what CAD system you are used to, you could take advantage of a four window viewport or a stacked view or a variety of other layouts. For this demonstration I'll stick with a single viewport layout. You can also quickly and easily access different default views of the model based upon its orientation. So keyboard shortcuts allow me to quickly access T for top, R for right hand view and B for back. I also have the ability to toggle perspective view on and off and to toggle the shadow on and off. Now I'd like to go through four different aspects of the system in this demonstration. They are markups, animations, renderings and technical illustrations. Deep Exploration has a tab system at the top of the screen which allows you to categorize your toolbars and create a workflow depending on what output you are trying to create. You can see here if I access the markups tab then I have access to all of relevant toolbars that deal with creating and viewing markups. Within the design process markups are very important. They allow engineers to communicate designs to each other and for engineering managers to provide feedback and validation of designs. Deep Exploration has an extremely comprehensive markup ability. This tab on the right hand side allows the user to save a snapshot or model view of the model. I've previously created and saved some markups that can be seen here on the screen. This view draws attention to some dimensions that need to have their tolerances validated. And this one makes reference to a particular section of the mold and references a digital image of a prototype that's been created. These markups contain notes, sketches, images, comments, dimensions and detailed views, all of the aspects that are required from a markup tool. I'm going to go ahead and create some markups so you can see how simple and easy it is to create a markup and then I'll show you exactly how these markup images can be used once they've been created. One of the problems with some of the markup tools available in the CAD systems is that they use the actual engineering CAD models for the markups. This means that people need a CAD license just to comment on a small aspect of the design. One added advantage of using Deep Exploration is there is no danger of a non-CAD user playing around with the CAD models that they don't know how to use which could end up in an unauthorized change accidentally being made. I've simply created a detailed view here and hidden some of the main casings to draw attention to the fact that one of the units is wrong and then I've also created a note. I can now very easily save this view in my portfolio of markups here. I can give it a name and then now if I go back to my standard view you can see that at any time 
I can activate this new view to see the markup that I just created. I can also save this model and we can take a look at how these markups can be used and how these markups can be conveyed to engineers or other departments or other companies and clients. Deep Exploration has a free viewing tool called Deep View. It comes with the software or can be downloaded from the website. This tool allows people without a license of Deep Exploration to view files and view markups and amend or create markups for use within the system. This is the Deep View interface and I can simply drag and drop our file into the viewport and wait for it to load up. You can see that visually Deep View looks very similar to Deep Exploration as I orient this model around. Deep View has the same pull apart functionality as Deep Exploration as you can see here. It also features the same cross sectioning ability and I can manipulate and change the orientation of that cross section. You can view the model in different modes as in Deep Exploration. For example I can change this to a wireframe or technical illustration mode. And on the left hand side are various other tools. We have the ability to see and access the scene tree exactly as per Deep Exploration and hide and unhide components. But most importantly for us is the ability to see those markups that were just created. You can see here the one that I just created and I have the ability to amend that markup or create a new one and then save back to the native Deep Exploration format so that those amendments can be seen by other people. This is especially helpful in the quotation procedure for companies such as RPM who can take existing tools and show them to customers in Deep View or Deep Exploration and show that customer exactly how things can work and mark up and communicate to customers exactly how their tool will work or will be modified for their needs. So that's an overview of markups and how they can be created and used within the Deep Exploration system and additionally how they can be used in the free to download Deep View. The next area I'm going to cover is how to create animations in Deep Exploration. This panel on the right hand side called Steps and Procedures deals with animations. I've already created a few short animations in the file that show the flow of plastic through this tool. Animations can be a very important tool for designers and are the pinnacle of visual communication. They can be used to educate and train people and existing customers of Deep Exploration are reporting a reduction in time to train someone of up to 50%. These animations that I just played are a set of short simple sequences that you can see listed here. If I activate one of these sequences and move the slider at the bottom of the screen you can see the movement involved in that sequence. These sequences are really very simple to create and I'll show you an example of how to create them and show you how you can group multiple sequences together to create a longer and more detailed animation. With this product the half of the tool called the cavity needs to move away from the half called the core to allow the mouldings to be released and the tool to be reset. So I can just create a new sequence here on the right hand side and then go and give it a logical name and then I can specify the length of this sequence. In this case I'll make it two seconds long. So now all I have to do is simply record what I'm doing in the screen. I'll just slide the animation slider across and then hit record. I'll then select the subassembly and simply move the subassembly into position. So I can simply use the slider and slide it back and forth through its motion like so or I can now play that sequence from beginning to end using the playback controls. I'll then group some of these sequences together to make a more detailed animation. I'll create a new step and give it a name and then I can add some assembly instructions to come up on the screen when this step is being played. I could also annotate these steps with symbols or logos, for example arrows to further indicate where a component is placed or highlighting areas where common mistakes could be made. I can then simply add the sequences I want in this step and at this point I can also reorder them or reverse them if I wanted to. Now at the end of this animation I want the tool to close so it's reset for the next moulding. So as I've just created an animation where it opens I'll copy that one, then reverse it, and once that's done, I'll just update the position in which the step is viewed.
and then I can play all of these steps together. So firstly we can see the animation I played earlier on with the flow of plastic being shown. And then second we will see a simulation of the actual part being moulded and then ejected from this tool. As I mentioned before, this could be used by many different departments in a company for operation instructions, for training instructions and for service instructions. You can imagine how many static images or how much written text it would take to explain to someone how this tool works. Instead you can create a simple animation using the CAD data that has already been developed and use it to show someone how the tool works and thus eliminate any language or education barriers by taking advantage of visual communication. Animations can also be used to show people how designs work or how they are assembled or disassembled or quite simply to convey conceptual design to another designer. One big advantage here is that at any point the viewer can stop the animation and go and interrogate the model in even more detail. These animations are also available in the free to download viewer Deep View, which we saw earlier on when we were looking at markups. So finally, this set of steps could be output and saved as a fully rendered photorealistic file the most common of which would probably be the AVI format. So that's a quick overview of animations and how they can be used to visually communicate complex designs in a very simple manner. The next area I'm going to cover is how you can create photorealistic renderings within Deep Exploration. Deep Exploration comes with a library of high dynamic range materials that you can see here. And to apply these materials, it's as simple as dragging and dropping them onto the models. As an example of some of these materials, I will drop some onto these components. You can see here this carbon fibre and also this metal material that I'm using. These are very detailed material files and support 3D texture mapping and decal mapping, but are also very easy to create and customise within this system if you need company standard colours or very specific materials. Once that's done, then we can change the rendering engine used in the viewport. This menu down in the bottom corner shows the ones available, and I'm going to switch to the HDR real-time driver. High dynamic range is basically a set of techniques which allows the computer to more accurately calculate light definition. And it's this light definition that is going to give our rendered image that photorealistic quality. Now with the high dynamic range driver comes something called environment maps. And environment maps are basically 360 degree high definition images with lights built into those images. As I orientate this model around you can see the background moving with the model and the lights coming into view and making these materials really come to life. To use environment maps you simply drag and drop them into the scene. So here we can see an example of an environment map, this outback scene. Or you can see this highway scene gives us a completely different lighting scenario. Neither are very suitable for this product but straight away you can see that it makes these materials look much more realistic. So for this rendering, I'll choose one of the many studio environments which are available in the Deep Exploration Environment Map Library. And I'll just simply orient the model into a position we want for the rendering like so. And then we can take a quick look at the rendering properties. There is a slider here for the overall quality of the image and some advanced settings that can be used. I'm going to set this to the highest. Here we can see all the different image sizes, so I'll set this on a fairly large image size and ramp the resolution up to a really good print quality to show the best possible rendering. You can see here the quality of this image. Photorealism that would rival an expensive photo shoot for quality of output. One advantage of using CAD models for rendering is being able to explore colour schemes. You saw earlier how easy it was to drop different materials onto these models. And here you can see an example of the output. Here we will see another example of rendering with this model of the lid moulded by RPM and a simple model of the bottle it fits onto. Again, I'll choose an environment map, orient the model to an appropriate view, and then I can render. Deep Exploration features a decal mapping tool 
and you can take any image and stamp it onto any material or any model, as can be seen here with the RPM tooling logo. Straight away we can see the results. The system has implemented the same settings as last time, and the result again is a fantastically clear and accurate photorealistic image. A final aspect to the rendering ability of the software is that you can add any digital image as a backdrop to the scene. If I drop this image here into my scene, then I can use the standard tools to scale and move it into position, and then render an image where the product is sat on this bathroom shelf. And this is something that is key to both designers and engineers to visualize the product they are designing in its natural environment, but also for marketing departments to be able to produce material that a customer can relate to. This is the final image here. Again, photorealistic and very easy to produce in a fraction of the time it would take to prototype and then photograph this product. The final aspect I wanted to cover in this demonstration is technical illustrations. I have some images that I've created here in a portfolio called user manual images. These portfolios are an area that make it very easy to manage all sorts of images that need to be created for the documents that need to be shipped with a product, such as operation instructions, user manuals, manufacturing instructions, or service documents. If I flick through these images I've created, you can see these are going to be used as a document that covers both maintenance and service of this tool. They contain notes and different display modes, but can also be annotated with symbols, callouts, sections, detail views, and many other aspects of the system that can be used to enhance these images. I'm just going to add some detail to this final image here. I'll manually add some callouts. I could also configure the system to do this for all of the components, or I could import XML bomb data from my CAD system to make sure these part IDs match with my engineering drawings. I'll add some thrust lines here so that we know which component lines up with the others. You can see the symbols here warning the reader about various aspects for handling this tool. These are very simple to use and you can just drag and drop them from a deep exploration library of symbols and then place them in the correct position. Again, a great example of visual communication. I'll then update my existing view. I can now export all of these images together in a format, size and resolution of my choice. Here we can see those JPEG images and they are ready to be dropped into the service menu document that is being created. I also have the ability in Deep Exploration to render as a vector image such as DXF or CGM or an Adobe Illustrator file. Here you can control those thick and thin lines which again are quite characteristic of technical illustrations and I can add a bomb table based on the balloons that I created earlier and I'll just save this to a certain location. I'll just drag and drop this into Deep View and here is our illustration. So you can see as I zoom in then I can select all these individual lines and if required I can take this into another application to edit it. So that's an overview of technical illustrations, an important aspect of the design process and an area that is becoming an increasing bottleneck for some companies that have the need to create and ship documentation with their product. You can see here how quickly and easily tech pubs can be created within deep exploration. The final aspect of this demonstration is how to output this data to a PDF file. You can of course use Deep View to share your data, or you can use one of the many PDF templates that are built into the system as you can see here. Once the file is created, I can orient the model around, look and zoom in on the various components, utilize the playback controls to play the animations that I created earlier, and also take a look at all those model views that I saved for markup purposes and for those document images. All of this contained in a very small PDF file. So that brings this demonstration to an end.
I hope this has given you a good insight into the capabilities of Deep Exploration 6.2 and shown you some of the great results you can get from this system and from your existing CAD data and how visual communication can help your company.